Okay, there we go. Hi, everybody. Hi, Kimmy. Hi. Hi. Oh, okay, it is recording. <laughs> yeah, it, I think it is. All right. So it's Kimmy and Lorena again doing another video. We should probably do a few more of these, like a little more often. Putting <laughs> I agree. Sing it on a video. The summer is over. <laughs> oh, my God. What an intense summer. Wow. Weather's finally a little better. Uh, for us in the desert, like we yeah. all sort of dread it, you know? You know, yeah, it's sort of like it, you literally are like you get cabin fever. It's it, it's not fun. Yeah, I have never wanted to move this badly from Phoenix before this, totally. <laughs> this summer. Yeah, it's. And I've never had this happen where it's like, oh, my God, the heat is so oppressive. I can't breathe. That's how it feels to me. And I've never had that happen where it's like, okay, I'll just get over it. I'll go, you know, go inside, do something inside and then just go be in your car, put on your air and just get there. But this year it's like, oh my God, I don't know. But we've had a brutal, brutal summer here in Phoenix. Global warming, right? That's <laughs> what they say. Climate change. I don't know. Anyway, let's not talk about that. So what do we have to talk about today? <laughs> Let's talk about something more fun. <laughs> All right. What do we want to start with today? We have at the top of our list, should we talk about today or right now, probable futures? Or do you want to start with reincarnation in Atlantis? Let's start with that. And yeah, let's just, uh, yeah. And um, okay. So let's start with Atlantis. And it's a good segue into past lives, I think. Do you think? <laughs> It is because uh, do you so do you have what do you how do you feel about Atlantis and uh, I think it was real oh uh, absolutely. definitely yeah it did exist as a um, well as they say it's much bigger than people realize that it's not just one place that it was um, a, a continent and with some islands. Um, and at some point there was a bit of, there was several tragedies or catastrophic events that kind of split it up. And so it kept getting smaller. Um, what do you, what do you know about Atlantis as far as all I've that? I've been like really interested in it, in it lately. Um, I saw somebody talk, I forgot on what podcast, but he was talking about people not realizing how big Atlantis was that it, and it existed in the Atlantic ocean, you mm -hmm. know, that, that placement. But that it was even bigger than that at one time. Um, mm -hmm. And <clears throat> that through their downfall was technology and the misuse yes. of technology. And then supposedly a lot of us here, especially in America, carry karma. Mm -hmm. Like um, from, and we're here to resolve a lot of the things that happened that we did in Atlantis. I've yeah I've heard and read the same thing too that a lot of that it was technology was our downfall yeah. and um and that it's a very similar thing that we're dealing with now mm -hmm. uh as far as where we're going as society and there are a lot of Atlanteans here especially I think in the U.S. uh specifically but that they're probably all over the world I'm sure but yeah yeah and then when you talk about Atlantis, there's Lemuria too. So, um, and that's over like where the whole, they say that the Hawaiian islands are um, part of the old Lemuria. Uh -oh, More of the Pacific side, side right? Like uh -huh. Yes, yes. The, where, like the Hawaiian islands are and stuff. Yeah. Sorry, do you hear that beeping? That's. I do not. Okay. Oh, good. Someone's trying to call me and my, it's not turned on. So it doesn't even make sense that that's happening. No, it happens to me all the time. <laughs> all I know is um, with Atlantis too, I've always felt like such an aversion to the East Coast. Like, like mm. I just wanted to move, like such a draw away from the East Coast to move West. And uh -huh. felt like it was always a heaviness. And I don't know if that's what I was always picking up. Um. <laughs> was that Atlantean connection too? To uh -huh. 
You yeah. Know? Well, I definitely have a connection to Lemuria and the Hawaiian Islands. There's something just magical about that place. And that's what they say that Lemurians, they were much more connected to less to technology and more to uh, a natural way of living. Um, yeah, and I, I believe that to be true. I don't have specific memories of Lemuria. Um, because uh, I do have a lot of past life memory, but I do have memories of Atlantis, definitely. <laughs> Didn't you have that one you talked about um, where you were being like in, like initiated in a, a healing tradition or school and then there was a teacher that had a lot of jealousy or something with you? I remember that. Yes. And you're bringing it back to me right now. That's right. I do have, I have several uh, memories in Atlantis. One is, yeah. And one is uh, I was in a healing, I, I was a healer, lived in a temple. Um, and that's what I did, which was really great because, and the thing is the energy that existed there, you didn't have to do anything else but that. So you didn't have to pay bills. You didn't have to, you know, worry about how am I going to get to work and do I have a car and <laughs> yeah. is, you know, you have a driver's license and all this crap that we deal with in the society and be a healer. The energy was, you were just, you were raised to do that. And that was it. And the energy, and I actually experienced it. I was doing healing on somebody and I actually experienced myself as a healer in a past life doing this. And the energy and the clarity and the focus was so much greater in that lifetime in Atlantis doing this work and so it's like okay so I can connect into that and help bring it in here because I felt it and experienced it yeah but it still is hard to hold on to that these days to um but that was Atlantis so it was definitely and I think that was earlier Atlantis before it really got uh I don't know, messed up, <laughs> shall I say? <laughs> Went awry. Uh, yeah. And then also, yes, and there was the past life where, and I don't know if it's, I'll have to look at that, if it was the same past life, because I did, I had a conflict with the main person in that healing temple tradition uh, where it was a huge problem. And I went through this huge humiliation and around that and, uh, are they, do you know, like, do you know who that person is now in your life? Yes, I do. You do? <laughs> I, I, you the story, I'm like, I think she knows who that was, that she has karma. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Which scares me a little just saying that, which is kind of funny. I'm like, oh, she makes me nervous, <laughs> which is so funny. And I, I have only interacted with this woman once and she oh. came in for a healing session. Oh, interesting. So she came yeah. for healing. Yeah. Right? she's the one that traumatized you yes oh it was a client wow I wasn't expecting that I was thinking yeah. maybe it was a teacher or a friend that you or like a family member no wow no <laughs> well, so yeah really interesting but anyway so uh so what's funny though is in those past lives like Atlantis, we still had similar issues and similar problems. We haven't escaped those. We have not, you know, we're still, in fact, I think that we could be dealing with past lives. I really, truly, we could be having, we may have thousands of past lives, thousands. And that doesn't mean that they were all here, but we're still, we're healing the soul and trying to, through these lifetimes, unwrap stuff and um and get rid of that karma not not an easy job at all yeah <laughs> when you think about that uh, yeah and I always think I don't know like I always feel like I'm expanding on the whole idea of karma too is like maybe mm -hmm. it's just well a experience and then mm -hmm. maybe there were things we refused to learn and it's just a carry forward of like incomplete lessons I, I know that's like yeah. some people don't like that word either but um maybe wisdom <laughs> I don't know. incomplete yeah. wisdom that you didn't gain for yourself 
Yeah, I think of it in a more neutral sense as far as it's just you're stuck in a pattern and you just haven't shifted out of it and saw what you were supposed to get, whatever that thing is. And so you're repeating the pattern. But in repeating the pattern, this energy is created around that. And sometimes it's really hard to break that. Right. Yeah. And also a lot of times through from past lives that we've had so much heartbreak. I mean, I think that uh, from what I've been learning, and I think this is, seems very true to me that that we are walking around just a lot of souls who've been heartbroken over and over and over and over and over again. And we're trying to heal that. We're trying to regain a connection to our soul in a profound and powerful way that as in that process, we start healing those pieces that hold us back from being our full self. You know, so, so healing is not just uh, like I have pain in my foot or my hip or whatever it's, um, or I have a disease, it's uh, the soul, the soul right. can be hurt and damaged. And so, and it's from just so much abuse and trauma and, and heartbreak. Because right. when any trauma, and, and that can be come in so many different ways. It's about um, how do you heal the soul from that? That's heartbreaking. That's, yeah. Anytime our heart is broken, it can, it, not necessarily, but it can feel like we've been betrayed and right. betrayed. Yeah. Like through business partners. I mean, it can be, I mean, I had terrible business partners. So <laughs> I could laugh about it now, but, and it's like, and it, it's, it's disheartening and that's the heart, you know, that's the soul right, right there. Yeah. So but the heart will start to, and this is what I've explored for myself. The heart mm -hmm. is our natural state is open heartedness, right? Like, yes. And yeah. Yeah. When, and I'm not going to go into the details of Chinese medicine around this, but like what I realized <laughs> is like pains and things I, I like judgments I was holding on to was a false way. I thought I was protecting myself and the thought of dropping <laughs> that experience was scary because then if you reopen that, that means <laughs> another opportunity that you, you basically just fear the repeat of That's the pattern. Yeah. You know, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you can, you know, I was in a circle, a message circle, and I've been doing this new work. It's a lot of mantras and I felt like, and this was like a mediumship psychic circle thing. And I felt my mother coming in and other mo people's mothers were there that day. It was very interesting or night. I suddenly felt like my heart was opening, like in such a big way that it came. It was also like it was coming from up here down into my heart and kind of spreading open. And I felt this sense of love coming in, but it was so profound and so different that my soul, I, my ego, this is more my ego, I think, was going, no, 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 too new, too vulnerable, too much feeling, oh my God, but it was profound. And I was being open in a really pure way that was connected to the mother, connected to the mother. That's, and we all have a lot of mother stuff. <laughs> um, but it was hard to handle. This was recent. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, this was not new. This was like about, a, I don't know, a month, six weeks ago, I don't know. Yeah, I tell you, the mother yeah. was healing, a lot of that. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah. But this is like, but back to past lives, how many lifetimes have we been hurt? How many, you know, there's so much. So moving this stuff um, is really important. And then back into past lives. So how many times, how important is it 
to know your past lives? That's such a good question. How, how important is it? I mean, I think it's important, but it can be, but we can put too much importance on it, just like everything else. Right. Um, do you have much past life memory? I mean, I had a few prior to my plant medicine work, but then I feel mm -hmm. like I only want to heal patterns. So if it happens to be that that information comes through related to something that's not of Kim Mathis at this pleasant, pleasant yeah. place in time, yeah. I'm okay with like it coming in, but then I also just sort of welcome it out. Like, uh -huh. so that, okay, this is the connection yeah. with the pattern of where it came from, but um, I just yeah. don't really focus on it, but I do feel mm -hmm. we have, we have those places, those signatures and other timelines, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they can come from. Yeah, so I think it can be really important to see some past life stuff or do some past life work that can be connected to those patterns so that you can so you can bring healing to that and, and bring light to it so that it, it can heal. I think that's a better way to put it. Um, but yeah, okay, so we are talking about this for a second, like people who remember a thousand past lives or a hundred past lives and, and they've been to a, a past life person to remember all those past lives. Do we really need to do that? <laughs> Did you say no? <laughs> no like, what does it serve? No, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think that it can be really important, especially if you're stuck in a lot of stuff, it can bring some light to it and it can really bring healing. I've had some amazing i've seen as a past life regressionist i've seen past lives uh some stuff really really heal in a profound way but these are people who are not stuck in they're more here they're planted here and they had some past life uh session to look at a specific thing and it did bring profound healing like profound but to get caught up in that cycle of having to know all of these things I think that's kind of silly and and what we were saying earlier where remembering a thousand past lives where is that gonna where are you gonna put that in your head you know I can see it as a file like there's a file system and it's like do, 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 access to past life memory come on up Boom. right so bring it up you know and and that might serve in some way, but to remember a thousand, I have a lot of past life memories, but I don't, I don't really think about it. I don't um, consider it. It's just, oh yeah, that's right. I did have that. And that was quite interesting. Okay. You know, cause there might be something that needs to be opened up from that thing and to look at it. I have a past life memory from like 10,000 years ago, but and it's from, in a, I'm a man and I'm watching so those like the Vietnam Mana Wars, you know, back in like the Vedas, like when all those big wars were happening in the okay. Vedic. Yeah, I, I have past life memory of that, but it's very like just, and seeing the destruction, witnessing uh, what was happening to the earth through these wars, that's what I remember. And, and standing there watching it and going, you know, kind of being overwhelmed by that. Um, and just seeing it as a painful thing, um, seeing the destruction of that. Um, so I remember that, but that was a momentary thing where that thing came up and I can feel it just talking about it, the energy oh, coming wow. out. So, so probably some healing around that still happening, but it's just, but I don't get lost in it and I don't, I don't need to know more. It's okay. If it, if it comes up, then I'll, I'll see it. Right. <laughs> That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but doing plant medicine, like you were talking about, I think that you can have a lot of past life memories from uh, doing that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it wasn't a ton, but it was enough to, and you know, I hold a lot of neutrality inside of me in the sense of, I know that I have like, okay, so in order to get to where we are, me as Kim, <laughs> you as Lorena, like, Mm -hmm. I also had a big awareness that in the Tao, I have shadow and I have light. So mm -hmm. uh, ayahuasca is what I had worked with at the time. She's one of the uh -huh. or couple, but with her, she brought through some really shadowy things that 
I think it was to bring me understanding more than healing, mm -hmm. to pull me out of victimization. Um, because mm -hmm. what she showed me was karma and her viewpoint was just energy creation, right? And so she brought mm -hmm. me to a lifetime where I had done some unsavory things. Yeah. <laughs> or I was a developed soul, you know, right. um, that caused the trickle down through ancestral stuff all the way down to my family line. And, <laughs> oh, wait, I take that back. It wasn't ayahuasca. It was peyote that showed me this. And oh, wow. uh, take that back. And what she, what she, what peyote said was, well, you started it. Now the gift is to complete it and finish it by the healing it all. And mm -hmm. so this is the full cycle of karma. That uh -huh, you right. So that was really like, oh, wow. Like I get to be the angel and the demon uh -huh. in the of, this, yeah, yeah. of this trauma, this, this patterning. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. So that was mind boggling to like yeah. see sides of myself because I'm playing the healer of it all in this timeline. That's amazing. You know? That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I saw myself once, I think I mentioned this before, like in a castle and I'm going to go murder someone. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> like, and when I saw it, I'm like, no, that's not me. <laughs> that's not <stuff's> hard. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't run off, but we have these sides. We, you know, we have all these pieces to us that we've done these things. And I had no, like, I didn't feel bad about it. Oh, no. I was like, I'm going to go do this. I have to. That's it. Just strong determination to go murder someone. <laughs> That's not me. So that was hard to see. But, you know, it's one of my past lives. And, um, and I was a woman, too. I mean, you know, that yeah. seems kind of uncommon. And... Um, and I saw myself as a dark, I was a dark witch. I've been pretty dark. And I think that when it's come to any kind of witchcrafty things in this lifetime, I'm like, I'm not interested. I, you know, and I tried, I picked up some books, I've read some um, around witchcraft and doing sorcery. And I'm like, no, nah. no, nah. because, yeah, I'm just not into it. I've, I've done it. But I you did it. Uh -huh. And and the thing is that I was really into it. I saw I was man, I loved it. And I was a dark witch. <laughs> so no desire to do that in this lifetime. I worked it out, I guess. I don't know. So I want to be a healer in this lifetime, I guess. That's why I can, <laughs> I can totally validate what you said say about that because I got spanked by plant medicines too. Like uh -huh. it was ayahuasca in this one. She literally showed me dark witchcraft too that I was cleaning up within this life lifetime uh -huh. and she's like nope that's not how you're going to use your gifts anymore like mm -hmm. time to yeah. work on that and then she's like and on top of it clean up your family line from that too because I come mm -hmm. from my mom's lineage they have some bruja uh -huh. like and uh -huh. they were throwing curses at men for cheating on like the women would come to the like oh my husband cheated on me oh we're gonna throw a curse on his penis kind of thing <laughs> like all that kind of stuff <laughs> And like, okay, I didn't expect you to say that. I, I, I know it's so it's, I I laugh at it, but like I was purging these curses uh, and men that women had come to to other women to like, oh, make him break uh -huh. up with girlfriend, kind of, you know, like those kinds of things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was tearing them in my body from my great 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 grandpa. Wow. Grandma. wow. So. That's a good thing to clear out. Wow. But yeah, it's time to move past that stuff. All that stuff is kind of wrapping up, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good to have kind of internal um, knowing of some of these things. But yeah, but you don't need to get it wrapped up in it. And yeah, that's silly. Like, to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, what it's easier to move through that stuff than to like have a hundred past life regression sessions and I think that's unnecessary but hey go for it if you want to right <laughs> I just don't think it's necessary that's just me all right there's so, a huge interest in the Akashic records right now too so like I think a lot of people mm -hmm. approach the Akashic records to like heal their 
things that they can't figure out how to heal with their mind. Yeah. Yeah. So. Sure. And that's, you know, that's, I think the Akashic record readings can be kind of that soul level information and healing. And so it's not just past lives. It's, it's soul. What is your soul? What's the progression of the soul? How did, why did you come into this lifetime? What did you come in to do? And all that can be really important information. Really important. Yeah. It's a part of healing the soul and getting information about what you're doing here. Um, it's good stuff. Um, it's all valuable to, yeah. Yeah. It's all valuable. Yeah. What are we doing here? What is <laughs> <laughs> What are we doing now? What are we doing next here, Lorena? Yeah. Okay. So next, well, we have um, looking into the future, looking into the future, probable time, futures, looking into the future. Um, is there a consciousness shift going on? And, and we can also talk about how to look at timelines to see if you can see anything coming up. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think about the, uh, um uh probable future timelines because we were just watching we both just watched this thing one of them's cliff high and the other one was uh probable futures the future for uh, what was that again the future, future forecasting group and the yeah which is remote viewing yeah yeah das smith and those guys um yeah so they're talking about event happening coming up probable event coming up and that it might be able to change which is an interesting thing to talk about so probable it's probable so they're all seeing this thing coming in the future that may or may not happen but they're all kind of seeing something that seems similar mm -hmm. um and um that if enough and the, they're actually saying that if enough people know about it maybe it won't happen because enough consciousness is brought into seeing a possibility that somehow it can enough consciousness is coming in that it won't happen huh. what do you think about that that's interesting it feels overwhelming like when i hear them talk about it mm -hmm. like not to like divulge but it's like a big shifting event like 9 11 mm -hmm. was um yeah but i'm also a firm believer that like we can change things mm -hmm. but it's gonna have to be in numbers yeah yeah um yeah well, and they higher, don't know a higher purpose to it i yeah i can't trust that there's a higher purpose if it does happen mm -hmm. um, but it's very the thing is about remote viewing and this is remote viewing and looking at uh future events um it's hard to identify you can feel a timeline you can feel where it's going to happen but you what you can't define is exactly what it is and where it's going to be like um and this is remote viewing this is what i'm talking about not you know nostradamus kind of stuff this is right. what well, is kind of a I, probably a remote it could have been called a remote viewer right <laughs> perhaps uh he was scrying but it's hard to the thing is about remote viewing you're not supposed to identify what the thing is so it, it comes in pictures and bits of information. So um, when you're looking at the future, so what you can do is actually, like I did it, I, I did this for myself once. One day I decided, but one evening I was, I just, I'm gonna look at future timelines and just see what happens. So, so I said, okay, I'm looking at next month. I think it was uh, in June. I'm gonna look at June and look at like a timeline, like literally see a timeline, like the months, like June, July, August, September, October, November, and look at the timeline and, and, and draw it in your imagination. You've got a timeline and it's almost like railroad crossing like these uh, for those dates and go, okay, show me, you go along the timeline, show me this month and see what comes up. And I actually saw when I was looking at it, the month of June go and of like, like literally like so i'm like okay something significant is going to happen in june okay so i'm going to pay attention to that and then i said show me the next month so august so so show me no july i don't know sorry i'm getting <laughs> i think it was two different times i did it so i said show me august 
And that was when my cat had surgery. It was this last year. And that was in July. And he he could have died. So it was like, this was life-saving surgery. And so when I looked at August, I got this vision of myself holding my cat. Aww. Like, And he was great. So I'm like, okay, so he's going to survive. And we're all good. And yeah, he's he's fine. And then I said, okay, show me, August, show me. I think I went into September. I could have these dates these months wrong, but I said, show me this month. And I saw this big explosion, like this big golden explosion. So, so that month comes along and I'm waiting for something to come along. And, and I'm like, I saw an explosion. What was the explosion? And waiting. And then all of a sudden, Mauna Loa on the big island of Hawaii had an explosion. Oh, wow. A big, the vol volcanic thing. And it was what I saw was something big and golden and it was an explosion. So, but I could not identify when I saw this thing, but I was doing a very simple exercise. What, um, I couldn't identify where it was. I just saw an explosion and I, and I did get the month right. So you can actually do this as an exercise. You can go, okay, show me a timeline. Show me this month. Show me this month. Show me this month. And just kind of go into a meditative state and see what whatever comes up, show me something important or significant in this month and just see what happens. It's, it's a method of, it's, it's kind of remote viewing, looking into the future. But the thing about when you're doing that kind of stuff, it's hard to pinpoint, especially bigger events, the exact date and the location and what the thing is. Like I saw an explosion. I had no idea it was a volcano. I had, you know, it was just this thing that I saw exploding. Now I could have explored it more, but I didn't because I didn't think of it <laughs> at that time. But that's something that can be explored further. Anyway, so that's so that's the problem with remote viewing is sometimes it's hard to get that kind of stuff pinpointed. And right. that's the stuff we want to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know they talk about too. I don't know how you sense. Gerald O'Donnell talks about it like there's probable future. So it's multiple. There's mm -hmm. possibilities mm -hmm. based on what's got the strongest energy. And what Daz was saying is what they were seeing, he didn't feel had completely solidified yet. But like mm -hmm. you can tell when you're looking if that thing you're seeing feels like diffuse compared to like, oh, this feels more solid. Like mm -hmm. it can manifest more. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Have you been able well, to distinguish that? Have I been able to what to feel the difference? Um yeah, well, it's sort of like sometimes when you do future readings for somebody, it's like, okay, how far outside of mm, what you're sensing how far outside of it is it in their field? Mm. Like, is it close by or is it far away? Okay. It's kind of like looking into future timelines. How far away is it? That makes sense. So, so, and then how far, if it's close into their field, then it's probably something that's going to happen more immediate. Or if it's further away, it is harder to pin down or pinpoint because something could change. Yeah. You know, um, and and there's a lot of different factors writing into this one thing, this one event occurring. So there's a lot of different little points or convergences of energy that make the thing happen. Right. So how is so it's so the further away it is, the harder it is to pinpoint that, and that's the problem with the thing. And that's that goes back to hypnosis and past life regression, future life progression, and people going into the shift, the big shift, the event that people were talking about really in a big way a couple of years ago, like this big event that's going to happen like this. <clears throat> and this has to do with the yoga cycles and some sort of solar flash. And then, you know, there's going to be a big, tremendous earth change. And then everything's going to be different. <laughs> so, and then some people will be on 5D earth and some people will be left, I don't know, on 3D earth. And, 
you know, all this stuff. A couple of years ago, that was huge, 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 huge. So, um, and I think, and is that going to happen? Because they kind of went, we're in 2023 now. Is that going to happen? Because we're kind of well past a lot of those times when people said something was going to happen. Right. Um, but that's, again, that's hard to pinpoint. That's really hard to pinpoint. And just humans just want to be able to control things and know if anything bad's coming down the pipe. Yeah. And anyway, that was really big back in like 20, I don't know, 2019, 2020. I'll oh, yeah. then go a little farther forward in that, that something big is coming. Well, was it COVID? I don't know. But we uh, have yeah. one minute left. Okay. Okay. Well, I think we had a good conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think it was COVID. People, yeah. Some Vedic astrologers were uh, oh. talking about something big coming. I don't think that was it at all. Oh. They're talking about like an earth shifting kind of thing event. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. So I guess we're going to close up really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want it to shut down on everybody. Okay. All right. Well, have a great day, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Got to say it. And uh, anyway, have a great day. Bye, Kimmy. Bye, guys. <laughs> All right. <laughs>